morning, friends. Welcome to the van. <laughs> Not at the farm this morning. Uh, uh, yeah, how's the old Trump? Uh, take a take one to the chest and one to the ear. I thought it was quite uh, impressive that he he was uh, number one wearing a bulletproof and number two uh, that he turned his head just like that. If he had, if his head was the same way that he was facing the crowd, it would have gone through the back of his skull. And he would have been stone dead. So, uh, or seriously brain damaged. So yeah, he's obviously uh, got some uh, some divine protection. Obviously, the Lord's looking after him. But um, what worried me about that uh, was the leadership. His leadership is is um, seems to be one. It's a one man show. Everyone's supporting just Trump and not the actual um, the Republican movement. I mean, Trump used to be a Democrat, eh? so now um, what I think because he's a he's a legend in his own right, but he should be bringing in his team. He should be showing the team off more to everybody, so that if something does happen to him, the Republican team itself can carry on and run things as normal. And that we've seen in South Africa as well with that MK party when they came in. Um, if you look at the parties that are currently in charge, they've got good structure and there's a whole team. So you know if one person falls off, the next person is going to take over and run the thing properly. But um, um, like the MK party without Jacob Zuma there, what's what's the, who's there? Who's running the place? What's nobody knows anything else but the MK party being Jacob Zuma. So there's, it's a one man show, you know. They, they need to need to bring out their team and show who the team is. And what I saw this weekend, I went to church yesterday, and, uh, amazing church, unbelievable. And uh, after church, I went to look down the passage and they got a, they, they show the whole leadership team from one side to the other. And there's, I don't know, 20 people there as a leadership team. There's a huge uh, bunch of you know, families and so on that, that can stand in for whatever happens. And uh, I was amazed by that. And I think that's what... For good leadership, you need a good team. You need the team that can uh, hold everything together. You can't just have one person. I know you need that driving force in some places, but that driving force needs to also understand that if, if, if you, you, like in war, you cut off the head of the snake, eh? that's the end of it, eh? it. It's over. Talking about churches. So yesterday, I just uh, uh, had a bee in my bonnet and I started Googling uh, South African churches and um, South African pastors, influential pastors and so on. I wanted to see what kind of leadership teams they have. And most of them, they don't even talk about the teams. But what struck me quite uh, to the core and made me a bit sick to one st at one stage was some of these pastors. The one church was the CRC church. And I, the reason that it stuck with me is because I went to a, a breakfast with them once. And this pastor, this Atboshov guy, he was he was preaching, and he was very smooth and very slick and like a yeah you know, real salesman type uh, pastor, but and very good at what he what he did. His, his his preach was very good, but he's amassed, to, uh, according to Google, a twenty eight million dollar personal wealth. That uh, they had a mini throw up. I I almost got sick. I couldn't believe that that a pastor who's in uh, in the, that kind of business is, is is generating wealth for himself, and it wasn't just him. Then there was a Ray McCauley, and he was like even more. So I mean, that's that's half a million rand. Uh, sorry, half a billion rand. That's five hundred and eight or something uh, thousand. It's five hundred and eight million rand that this guy's amassed uh, in, in his personal capacity. And then on top of that, there was this Ray McCauley, and there's he's had some questionable things happen in his life to be in that uh, line of faith I guess uh, I shouldn't be judging him but uh, it, uh, you know there's track records there and then there was this Bashiri guy you know that, that uh, up now going into Africa and uh, this that, that Bashiri oak is even more he's like you know, he's like over a billionaire in, in rands already and then there was one other chap I can't remember his name um, don't really care um, he didn't register to me because he's yeah, he's, <laughs> I don't know why, but he's also African, um, a master wealth of one billion dollars, not rands, dollars. And I just, yeah, I was already so sickened by the whole lot. I don't know. How do you guys feel about that? Um, to me, if you, you, you take up the calling to become a minister or a pastor in a faith-based uh, uh, 
um, organization or a, um, if you're a Christian for that matter, that's what made me so sick because Christians shouldn't be like that. Uh, to me, you shouldn't be accumulating personal wealth. Um, I know that you need money to build churches. That's fine. I understand that. But you shouldn't, and, and this reminds me like back to the Nelson Mandela Children's Fund back in the day where they had a million, they had built up a million dollars in the Nelson Mandela Children's Fund. And that almost made me sick. Why is the money in there? The, that money could be feeding children. It could be helping children. There should be no money in there. They should show where the money went. But there should be zero bucks inside there. Absolutely nothing. It should be spent on feeding kids and helping people. Anyway, I'm ranting now. It's taking too long. That's my Monday morning two cents. I hope I'm not uh, putting things off on a bad foot. But anyway, that's where I am this morning. <laughs> Have a good day, folks. Cheers.